Hello everyone and welcome to TFYLP episode number pre-record. Uh, again, don't know what uh, what the episode number will be. Uh, this will air at some random time on a random date. Uh, but uh, probably you already know why I'm pre-recording. Um, so I'm not going to go into that big long uh, gist uh, again. But uh, here we are uh, and with another episode of TFYLP and I just noticed that the video was totally off center on the intro but who cares it's up there you know what it looks yeah. like you know yeah. what it looks like it still looks awesome I love it uh, but with me this evening is Jack Bruner yay finally back got his, got his Skype working for once for once and the only time it's going to work is on a pre-recorded <laughs> we'll try to go live and it'll be like you will be like last time we was in it for five minutes and then yeah five minutes and <laughs> yep also with me is christian russell hello and sergio good evening in the dark good evening and welcome to our show well i'm trying not to talk too loud because it's we're recording very late and uh, just on the other side of this wall is a sleeping child, so I don't want to wake her yes. too much. I got people yeah. above me right Tehran now. Tehran keeps children in his in his home against their will. Yes. It has something to do with the ice, tr- ice cream truck parked outside. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what a, that's for. <laughs> not kidnapping, then. <laughs> it says captured prey on the side. <laughs> <laughs> I always, I always joke with Orson when uh, we was at cons and we was in the Capture Prey van. Everybody always referred to it as the pedo van. <laughs> because of, it's advertising. It's a van. It's advertising toys. Yeah. Yep. Free toys. Come and get some. He does give away free toys. Yeah. Oh, no. When he feels like it. Come and bring your toys. Oh, no. Bring, no. bring your mushly arms right over no, here. No, we need to move on before this gets too weird. <laughs> Mr. Herbert. <laughs> and what's sad is I think he can do a better impersonation of Herbert than, than me. So. He does a good I do one. not want to hear it. I heard it. It's pretty good. He, he does a really good Hank Hill, too. I bet he does. Yeah. <laughs> propane and propane accessories. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Butane is a bastard gas. Lord. But uh, we are here to talk about this show. (laughs) We are here to talk about Transformers. Uh, As always, if you love what we do here on TFYLP, you can go up here at the top of the screen, uh, kind of kind of pointing up here patreon.com slash tfylp if you want to help us out each and every month uh helps us uh, get better equipment helps uh pay for uh, the high 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 speed internet that we need to broadcast in good uh sharp high definition and all kinds of jazzy stuff like that uh, but it helps us keep going and helps us serve you the fans and the listeners of tfylp and we appreciate each and every one of you uh, right now um, and you know for a limited time while supplies last if you uh, are a patreon regardless of what le- whatever level if you want one christian russell will send you a free crank and stack coin i will i have so many of them please yes. take them away from me <laughs> <laughs> i think i said that i wanted like 10 of them you know what you can have 10 you want 10 well, I can i see one quick month, so just flash what? one quick. I want to see it. Oh, okay. I'll be right back. Flash a quick one. Oh, if they're across the room, you don't have to. Uh, flash one real quick. Okay. Flash quick. <laughs> here's, here's my boob. My boob. Sergio, have you, uh, uh, have you picked up any great toys lately? Uh, I mean, nothing's coming out. The last thing I got was MPM Barricade. Wow. Oh, there we go. Pretty. And you said you had how much of these? They are rather, twenty-three of these. They are rather nice. I have to. They admit. are nice. They I just don't need twenty-three of them. Twenty-two of them are up for grabs. <laughs> no, Jack. Well, would you like one too? All right. So 
Even though, even though you don't have crank or stacks. No, I don't. Exactly. I don't have either. Neither do I. I, I, I had I like, them both. I like free stuff. I don't think anybody wants to have them. I had them both. They were they were okay. I mean, it's X trans box. What are you gonna? I mean, I got I pretty much got my Megatron for free. But uh, uh, yeah, you know, still... incidentally, I I saw you know I've already paid for mine, uh, but I saw where X trans bots had uh, issued a statement saying that they had a pricing error on crack up. He's not supposed supposed to be like thirty five dollars. He's supposed to be like sixty five. <laughs> So yeah, yeah right. Yeah, wow. my opinion is what uh, they saw what everybody else was selling for and just brought it up, brought it up. So, but yeah, we'll so, see if that's gonna. Wait, happen. So what if I pre-ordered it for thirty dollars price? Are they gonna yeah. raise it? I've already pre-ordered it and paid for it, so I, I don't. It's I think it's up to the, up to the individual retailer. I'm gonna um, be just right now. Check my pre-order. I'm not. I only pre-ordered it because it was thirty dollars. Yeah, yeah that's what I did. Just I'm like, I'm I'm like ma- masterpiece style, and yeah, I mean, it, it looks to me personally, I like it better than the DX9 one. The DX9 it's got one the scale better. Yeah, the DX9 one has better, or uh, or the X Transbots has better scale. As I a, like the color better. A, so this is what figure again? Mine at thirty nine ninety nine. Crack up the uh, breakdown. Stunning breakdown. Have, yeah, they still have them at thirty nine ninety nine. Yeah. Well, it, I think yep. it was. Uh, it Even was, TF stores got them too. For it was. It was an over. Prime still thirty nine ninety nine. It was an overseas store that actually uh, broke uh, the news. I, I believe I saw it on one of the third party uh, Facebook forums uh, that that shared it. You know, so uh, it it's probably like gas prices. One one does it, and the others will follow suit. Or it, it might be so late in the game because literally those pre orders have been up for so long. Uh, I know I pre-ordered. Yeah, at least since fall. Yeah, I, I know I I paid for mine. I'm wanting to say like November, maybe mm-hmm. October or November, maybe. Uh, I placed my order October 22nd. Yeah, so as soon as they went up, I'm pretty sure I, uh, that's whenever I got mine in. So, um, I guess we'll see how that goes. Yeah. By the oh. time this airs, maybe we'll maybe you guys will have found out. Well, it should you know, be getting pretty close to release, so. Because they're starting, we're starting to finally, after long months of silence, we're starting to see uh, actual test shots and stuff in hand, and and uh, review samples going out, and uh, so, you know, maybe like I, like you said, by the time this airs, it will actually have been released, and it'll be a kind of a moot point. But right now, we we don't know. Uh, I I don't know, uh, and I don't think even Orson knows yet. I guess he'll probably change it if if need be but uh, if i'm not mistaken i think all of his pre-orders are sold out and if they if they jack the price up uh, on him he may have no recourse to, uh, but to raise the price or something other because it would take like all the money from the pre-orders if they're charging double it, it basically he would be breaking even on it you know if that or or losing money and no retailer wants to do that mm-hmm. so so I don't know. Uh, it's big question. It's strange. Yes, but you know, if you'd like to uh, save money on uh, great T-shirts from Ripped Apparel or uh, posters or whatever you find on the Ripped Apparel website, as long as there's not a preempting uh, great deal going on, you can input the code TFYLPPOD, all capital letters, and you will save ten percent on your orders at RippedApparel.com. Uh, that's a really good deal. I've actually taken uh, advantage of it a, a couple times, and I know several other people have. Uh, so I have yet to get too. a shirt through them. <laughs> well, shame on you. There's some really good stuff there. I'm, Pretty I'm, much the only thing that's related to Ripped Apparel that I have is the lanyard and the cup holder. Cup, uh, no, can koozie I got from Sergio when I got my alternators out the mess. Uh, that, was when I was, that was when I was still working there. Yep. I packed it. I packed it in the warehouse, and we had a like, we literally had like five boxes full of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, because I was opening the box, and all of a sudden those two pop out. I'm like, oh, I wasn't even expecting this. Nice. I have said that I missed the Galvatron Iron Maiden uh, T-shirt. I think uh, that's exclusive. It, you might bring it back. 
yeah, if uh, Paul showed it whenever he was on the show uh, several weeks ago, and uh, uh, I, I totally missed that, you know, because I'll be honest, I don't check the website every single day, and that happened to be on one of the days that I, I didn't check. Uh, and Snoozing. Yeah, I'm snoozing. <laughs> Sno I snoozed, I lose. But, <laughs> but you know, uh, hopefully it'll come back around, and we'll we'll see. Um, but tonight's episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about stuff, uh, oh, and your chattering is back, Jack. Oh, I don't know what you did. Ah, oh, there it went. It went away. Uh, now his mic's unplugged. Yeah, if you if you hear chattering or sounds like the predator sneaking up on you, yeah, it's <laughs> back. <laughs> It's 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 Jack's. Computer. It's probably the mic. No, I even unplugged it. And it wasn't that. Uh, it was gone for so long. I don't know. I know. You must have bumped something. Pissed off the wrong person. It's probably it's probably a CPU yeah, fan or, or a cooler a cooling fan. Might uh, might have a bad uh, ball joint in it or something. But anyway, uh, while, while while he's working on that, uh, tonight's episode, as you can see. Um, we have the three youngest members of TFYLP's, uh, cast on the show. Whippersnappers. And, yes, the, you young whippersnappers here. What's bad is that most of you, I could be your dad. That's, that's scary. I think Christian's probably, uh, you're, you're how yeah, old? Pro probably not me. You're, you're yeah, how old? he's a little too old. I'm 26. You're 26? Yeah, I would have, I would have been a mid-teenager. I could have been a mid-teenager, yeah. In theory, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, but definitely Sergio and Jack. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like don't I'm, give me that picture. I don't want. I don't want that in my head. Because it's like less than less than a week. I'll be forty three years old. So, but hey, at least I have uh, Don that's older than me. So, <laughs> yeah. the only plus side, Don yeah. will outlast all of us. Yeah. <laughs> With the Supreme Class Cheetors. Yes, it, the apocalypse will happen. It'll be Dawn on a throne of Supreme Class Cheetors. <laughs> he'll be okay, going, that picture, he'll be going no, can't... no, no. <laughs> it, and it's still back, Jack. Huh. Interesting. Do you have any foam or something other maybe set it on? Something foamy? A pillow? Like a pillow, yes. A pillow would be great. Yes. Is your, if your bed is nearby. <laughs> or a shirt. Mm -hmm. Not the one you're wearing. No, yeah, that's it. Or use, the one you're wearing. Use your, I mean, use your pants. <laughs> but anyway, it off. <laughs> Sergio is looking intently. For our audio-only listeners, Jack is fully nude right now. Oh God. <laughs> It's like dangling. <laughs> Hung like a light switch. Yeah. <laughs> he has a dang he has a dangling participle there. But anyway, uh we're gonna be talking uh, about the fandom coming into the fandom as uh, you know, I I've I've been a part of the Transformer fandom. I came on board uh, whenever the Generation 1 cartoon aired as a three-part special, the More of the Meets the Eye special, and then, uh, and then it became a full-blown cartoon. And, you know, I, I, I've been here since the very, very beginning. Uh, but these three cast, ma uh, cast mates on here, they came along much later. And we're going to be talking a little bit about what it's like to come into the Transformers fandom, what attracted them to the Transformers fandom, and what it's like generally to come into the fandom from late in the game, as it were. Um, somewhat. Now, I mean, granted, it's now much later for you guys, too, but mm -hmm. it's it's it was late in the game, as it were, for, uh, uh, for, for people like me and Don. Uh, you know, us, us g winners. Uh, so... The old farts? Yes. 
So I'm going to uh, start with the oldest and, and work to the youngest because, uh, you know, Jack, he's he's probably going to have the early, uh, the 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 newest memories, I guess, as it were. Pretty much. So, some of us, you know, were well into our adulthoods whenever he started collecting and got into it. Oh, Oops. somebody's getting a phone call. Telephone. Sorry. I forgot to mute it. Yeah. Girlfriend sending nude pictures. I wish. It's actually Jack. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> So, Why did he get my number? so basically, if if Jack sends him a picture, a selfie, it's a dick pic, you know. <laughs> Every time, don't give Jack your number. Yeah. Yes. Every single time. <laughs> Without fail. So, so Christian, uh, when did you become? Or when did you come into Transformers? What era did you come into Transformers? And what actually attracted you to this great hobby of ours? Last week. <laughs> yeah, last week. <laughs> Surprise. La uh, it's like, uh, what attracted it to me? Your mom. <laughs> yeah, Sergio's mom. She and I have a history. Uh, anyway. Uh, that, you know, that, that I, I, I could actually say that, and it could be true. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I like older women. What? Yeah. Um, that Ooh. question has several answers. Uh, my first Transformers toy was a G2 space case I got at Big Lots probably in like 1994. Oh, wow. And then I started watching Beast Wars not knowing that it was really Transformers. Mm -hmm. That's 96, 97. So you got your first Transformer the year after I graduated high school. Yeah. If, if that's, oh. That puts it that puts it in perspective. I was well, I was a freshman. Old. I was a freshman in college the year you got your first Transformer. Yeah, so remember we talked about this on in the pre-show. The yes. alternate title for this episode is How to Make Duran Feel Old. Yes. <laughs> See, I have gray gray hairs in my beard. <laughs> Here comes the new one. Yeah. <laughs> Several, actually. All right, what, so what? the rest of the story is that I, I really liked robots in general and my parents used to take me and then later me and my my little sister up to Blockbuster every weekend so we could have a pizza movie night together. And we get, you know, a movie that we could watch together, but they'd also let me get you know, something from the kids section. And anything that had robots on it, I was I was going for it. And the first ones I picked up were the uh, was it Rhino or FHE t VHS tapes it's from probably Blockbuster. the FHE, yeah. Family yeah. Home Entertainment. Yeah. Yep. And they had a couple G1 episodes on it. I remember watching SOS Dinobots a lot. You know, we'd rent it over and over again. And I, then the very first time that those came out on Betamax, if that gives you an idea how long ago this was. I don't even know what that is. Betamax came out before VHS. Yeah. It was like yeah. right before VHS. Yeah. Uh, it was actually a better format because of the, uh, the way uh the quality the quality of the picture but it's actually a more ex it's kind of like, look at it as um uh the uh blu-ray versus the hd dvds hd dvds were actually kind of a better format because i uh, i guess they could store more information or what have you but it was a more expensive format so it lost out uh because sony one had money and could pour more money into it and make it cheaper. Hmm. Uh, so, but Betamax is pretty much that. But anyway, SOS Dinobots and I think War of the Dinobots, I believe, were on the same same yeah. tape. And I, I remember were... I remember watching it so many times. I literally wore out the tape that my <laughs> local video store had. Uh, I, I watched it so many times. The tape would not play. A, a clear video anymore <laughs> I, I i memorized every line of sos donald bots basically sounds it. like my story yeah I, I would pick them up every week not the same ones every week you know you have to rotate through but i picked up those pretty often i also picked up the gobatron saga from gobots mm. pretty regularly and then once I was able to get online for the first time, so about 97, maybe 98, I was little, but my, my parents always had technology in the house. And you start researching, you know, what these things actually are. I found out that Beast Wars was actually connected to 
Transformers, and that's really what solidified me as a Transformers fan more than a GoBots fan, just because you know there was new Transformers that I could watch every every day after school at four o'clock. They'd be on. I loved it. So yeah. Beast Wars is my introduction. And by that, and that, by that point, GoBots were officially part of the Hasbro banner. So yep. yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that much. until much later. Yeah, but I was a child, so give me a break. Hmm. But I had a couple of Beast Wars toys, and then picked up a couple of you know through Beast Machines, Robots in Disguise, and then Armada here and there. I liked Minicons a lot, and I th- I put my official date as really becoming a collector sometime in Energon, so 2004. That's when I was really like, you know what, I want to keep doing this for as long as I can think to do it. And I want to collect like a lot of toys because it's fun because it's fun. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when you're a kid, you kind of, or at least I, I did my, my parents helped me buy my first group on eBay. And it was just like someone's, someone went off to college and left it behind a whole bunch of G1 toys. Mom packed them up in a box and sold them on eBay. And I got that box. It had jump starters in it. It had a pretender bumblebee shell. It had three out of four of the sky scorchers from G2. Oh, and you know when I had those, I was just like, you know what? I want to have more. I want to get every toy ever made. I I realized later that's not really a practical goal to have. Sure, it's way yeah, too much. Yeah. But I remember opening that box at my grandparents' house, and it was just I, I fell in love immediately. So, couple couple different answers, couple different stages. Sweet. But so, really, full time since two thousand four, and I never stopped. All right. Well, we'll come back to you here in a minute, a minute and we'll we'll take up uh, with some more. Uh, but Sergio, let's. Uh, how did you come? What era did you come into the fandom, and what uh, what lured you to Transformers? Oh, I'm uh, gonna answer that for him. Sergio's moment of truth in Transformers was watching Devastator appear for the first time in Revenge of the Fallen. He saw the wrecking balls and, and couldn't couldn't resist any Don't longer. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> he tells me that story all the time. He says how tragic. I still get nightmares and... from that scene every day. And, th- every and then, day. and then he enjoyed the uh, the the moment where uh, he was sucking up everything. Yes, and then the humping dogs in the end. So yeah. that was always that. He really liked that. <laughs> Did I miss any part of it, Sergio? I think you covered all my bases. <laughs> <laughs> covered all your mom's bases. Um, <laughs> let's see. My first toy was. Well, what era first? Uh, what? Uh, I don't know the answer to that because my first toy wasn't from the first cartoon I watched. That's uh, well, uh, it's kind of like like uh, Christian. You know, he said he got G two Space Case, but yeah, um, there really wasn't a show for that. <laughs> it was just G one reruns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah uh, sweet my, jet robot. My That's first awesome. toy was R I D Heavy Load. Is it was he the steam shovel? Or the it's Grimlock. That was Grimlock. No, Grimlock. Bulldozer. Bulldozer. Oh, that's Wedge. Wedge, yes. Wedge. There we go. So he was my first one. The first toy. Oh, wow. And then... That's actually a decent one, too. It was actually pretty cool. And it had like, toy. It had like die cast and stuff on it, too. Which is pretty cool. The Yeah, yeah. wasn't the chest die cast? No. I think no. it was... Uh... I don't, Could have sworn I don't even think the Japanese... The on. I don't think the Japanese one even had... Diecast. I literally haven't touched it since. Right. My, no, my it does not have diecast. <laughs> um. So that was my first toy. The first show I watched was Armada, and then my first introduction into G One was the movie when they released it for was it the twentieth anniversary of Transformers? Twentieth, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was the same it way. Was, it was when they released it. I had no idea what G1 was. I just like Transformers, and I was like, well, I guess I'll buy it. And I had no idea who anybody was, except for, like, Optimus Prime and all of that. Because um, he's maintained and, a similar look pretty much throughout the years. Yeah. I mean, he's red and blue, so he wasn't hard to differentiate. And he's got the moth Um And then I didn't get into collecting until I was, like, 13. And I literally I got bored one day on my computer, and I Googled Transformers. And then, like... I think the first site I stumbled upon was TFW. And then from then, I literally that same day, I discovered uh, the YouTube reviews. This was like, when was I 13? Like 2008, 2009? 2009. 
I think. Yeah, 2009. So this was like right before Revenge of the Fallen came out. And so, uh, like, I had no idea. This is like in December. So this was before all like the toy leaks had come out. And so I was still watching reviews of like the first movie toys, and then all the like speculation videos about what's going to happen in Revenge of the Fallen, and uh, nobody saw the two Devastator balls coming. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, that was like my first exposure into the fandom. Like, I had no idea that it existed. Like, I had no idea that there was people that collected these things. Like, I knew that Transformers had been around my entire childhood. I just had no idea that it was like, so big. big. Yeah. Like, I knew the movie was, like, popular, the first movie. But I didn't know that, you know, there's websites and YouTube videos dedicated to it. Like, to me, I thought that was weird that, like, people watch other yeah. people play with toys. <laughs> I it was the same way. And I expected it to be kids. And I heard, like, the first guy I watched was P.O. So, like, I saw some, like, grown-ass man playing with toys on YouTube. <laughs> and I was like, what is this? But I kept watching. And I'm like, this is pretty cool. And then I kept looking into it. And, and then I think, and here you have grown ass men sitting around talking about toys for two hours. Yep. <laughs> yeah, with like glass cases of toys. Now, like that's crazy how I went from like, what is this to like now I have thousands of dollars of toys. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's amazing how quickly it can explode. Wait a minute, that oh. sounds so bad. <laughs> I think that. I think that's, that's what she said. Hobby, though. Like, with any hobby you get into, like, as soon as you get into, like, you want to, like, do everything. And yeah, now... If it really clicks with you, then you just yeah. launch headlong into it. Now that I'm, like... Now that I have been into it for so long, I've slowed down a lot. And, like, I really think about what I buy. And, like... And, like, not everything that comes out interests me anymore. Whereas before, it's like, I need to buy everything that comes out. All the you know? things. And then now it's like... Eh. If I don't buy it, okay, I'll just get it down later. Well, I mean that's that's something that uh, that we can touch on too. Is is you know get, first getting into the hobby, and then how your your habits change as you grow in the hobby. Um, you know we've we've talked about that from the G one uh, collectors' point of view. You know we have our ebbs and flows, but coming into the fandom at a much later time. It's, uh, you know, it's it, it, it's a little bit different. Uh, so so let's move over to Jack. Uh, Jack, what era did you come into Transformers and uh, how, what allured you to the fandom? Well, I came in, I want to say it was like late 2001, I think it was. Because um, I was about two, two or three. So it was like towards the end of the original R.I.D. Um, and right before the Unicron trilogy started. Um, pretty much the main thing that drew me, I was at the bowling alley that my parents usually bowled at. I think it was like a Tuesday night. And a friend of mine came down and he brought this one figure. And I was just like, what is that? And he goes, yeah, this is a Transformer. I go, can you show me what it does? And he showed me from alt mode to... Uh, robot mode i'm like dude these things are sweet so you remember which one it was honestly no um i keep thinking it was unicron but it's not because obviously it was before armada and all that but uh i forgot what it was but all of a sudden i go to the store with pretty sure it was my mom and like let's go check out toys okay um then i saw transformers i'm like can i get one sure there you go, and uh, boom. One big the explosion flood, after The it. floodgates open. Do you remember oh, which one yeah. that was that you bought? Uh, Come on, everybody well, remembers their first. After, that reminds me of a certain scene in GTA 5, but anyways. Uh, <laughs> um, after Hasbro acquired the GoBots, there was this one cheesy line it was pretty much like the one step changes today it's like oh yeah just did once one quick action and it just automatically transforms and it was like just little cop car type thing i forgot what the name of it was but we go find out yeah i i mean it's been obviously 18 19 years since then so what I, the I'm spy just like, changers ah. 
It wasn't supply changers. It was. No, I think it's it was... the play school go bots. Yes. Oh, those. okay. Because obviously I was like two, two and a half. Well, so, yeah, uh, I, I got to understand, you know, whenever, you know, whenever he saw first saw these, that would be yeah. a, a track. Uh, because I, I have to admit, I have never in my collecting hobby. I know there's some people out there that does it and, and they don't mind it. They actually enjoy it, but they actually collect, you know, some of the preschool ones like the rescue bots and everything. I, those those don't aren't even on my radar as a collector. Yeah. I've never bought Same. a single one. I've picked them up and looked at them in the store and I'm like, eh, eh. well, it's you know, I but I I do I am glad that they exist simply because they help uh, much younger kids get into the fandom. You know, uh, I know my my cousin or not my cousin, my nephew, uh, his son is getting ready to turn four and he is huge into rescue bots uh the end of this month they're getting ready to throw him a birthday party and it's a transformers themed birthday party uh so uh, rescue and you got to thank rescue bots for getting him into him i i I really think that that's going to help him have a foundation of uh, oh no what what have i said now that's innuendo (laughs) surger is antagonizing me on facebook messenger oh but uh (laughs) Yeah, my cousin's son actually has quite a collection of rescue bots, and uh, my cousin messaged me. He's like, uh, I know that you collect Transformers. Can you send me a photo? I want to show it to uh, Camden, my uh, cousin's son. And I was like, sure. So I sent him just the one of these bookcases, and she actually took a video of it showing him. He's just like, wow. <laughs> just yeah. like the little... Aliens from Toy Story. My my sister, uh, um, she called me the other day and was telling me uh, that there are two rescue bots that uh, his mom was looking for for uh, for her grandson. And I'm sitting, I'm sitting here, and I'm like, okay, you know, I'll, I'll help you find them. How hard could it be? And I had no idea that there's some rescue bots out there that easily crack the $100 mark because they're so freaking rare. What? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, there was... What? seen a couple on eBay. And they, yeah. 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 Uh, there, uh, there's one, um, I'm wanting to say it was uh, called High Tide. Uh, now, oh, you High can, Tide's awesome. Yeah. You it's can, a giant boat. Yeah. Uh, there, well, there's one that's like a play set. But there's another yeah. one that uh, that turned that he actually turned into like a, a boat, and it was it's kind of like one of the uh, the full size uh, rescue bots. He was meant to be an Amazon exclusive, but uh, for whatever reason wasn't released. I guess over here and came out overseas in a limited release, and mm-hmm. he is really hard to find. And I, I, everywhere I looked. You know, even for a loose one, it was like 70, 80 bucks. Uh, but for a sealed one, it was like 100, 120. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Damn. Ridiculous. And and whenever I came back to my, my sister, I'm like, I am I hate to tell you this. I, I, I had no idea. Some of these things are actually highly collectible. And, you know, and I guess now in the grand scheme of things, if I stop and think about it, Probably a lot of people think the same thing about just the or the normal Transformers we collect. It's like I had I no idea they, they could be so, worth so much. Like uh, how, how could a kid's toy be worth so much so much money? Wait a minute. And I I guess it's one of the <laughs> it's, I guess it's one of those eye opening moments for me as a collector uh, that it, it was kind of an outside looking in moment for me. It's like I don't collect rex, rescue bots. They've never been on my radar. Um, you know, I've been aware of them, but then I find out that they're worth so much. I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. And then there's another one, uh, uh, that was, that had a similar fate. It's called salvage. And those things run around 50 or 60 bucks. And I'm like, wow, this, this this is crazy. Absolutely (sighs) crazy. Um, but I, I can't really knock it. You know, I mean, it is what it is. 
but uh, you know whenever i told her that's what the prices are she's like no way i'm i'm not paying that these are meant for a four-year-old child i'm not going to get those for a four-year-old child to sit and play with you know mm -hmm. not pay that kind of price and at the same time i can kind of see why parents even my parents whenever i was a kid uh you know balked at the price of some of the transformers then i remember vividly the day uh, I got my Generation One Metroplex. You know, we uh, my uh, the uh, the story goes. Um, my mom, dad, and I we went into a Roses department store. I don't know if any of you guys remember that store, uh, but um, we had we. There's actually some still in existence here mm -hmm. in in Kentucky, uh, but they were much more prevalent uh, whenever I was younger. Um, think Kmart, but like on a much smaller scale. You mm -hmm. know, um, uh, but uh, we went into a Roses, and that was the very first time I saw Metroplex and Trypticon on the shelf. Generation 1 Metroplex and Trypticon. And for whatever reason, I picked up Metroplex first, I guess probably because he, I came to him first. And I'm standing there looking at him, and my dad was with me. Normally, my dad was absolutely against me getting toys. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason that day, he he saw me uh, absolutely enamored by this toy. And he he I remember him asking me, so uh, you you want that one? And I'm like, yeah, I do. And he's like, all right. You know, not knowing, he didn't even bother looking at the price. I'm thinking, you know, maybe he's going to be, uh, you know, generous today, you know. Hey. So we get up and meet my mom because she had went to a different area of the store. And uh, we got up to the register, and she saw me carrying it. And she's like, you're letting him get that? Yeah. And I, I distinctly remember all of this, all this exchange because of the way he reacted afterwards. Um, you know, it goes through the, uh, the checkout, rings up, and he sees the price. I want to say it was like 60 70 bucks, which, you know, today we'd spring for a 60 or 70 buck Metroplex. Um, but, you know, it was... It was probably around that price he flipped his lid he goes that's how much that's how yeah, much back then that was that's i think that's around yeah, 150 he, now he was making a scene uh, <laughs> and my mom looked at him and said and said look you know you told him yes it's it would be unfair to take it away from him now so went ahead and get through uh, got through the line we got out to the car and he was fuming the entire way home he was i mean he was giving it to uh, to my mom he was giving it to me telling me no more no more this is bull crap only you know he was yeah. you know you know he was he was he was livid but in all honesty it was his mistake he he was thinking it's a toy how bad how how much could it be and yeah because he didn't if you're look, saying it was 60 back then it's saying it would be about 140 right now. Yeah, I mean it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. He 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 just walked into it, I guess. And I, I remember I remember it well because that was one time I, I I rarely saw my dad flip out in public, but that time he did, and I I felt so small that uh, because of that and uh, and everything, but. Uh, you know, I I was actually because I was able to hold it. I was sitting there and holding it in the back seat, but they wouldn't let me open it till I got home. And I was at, whenever I, even whenever I got home, I was afraid to open it because I thought he was going to take it back and and everything um, because he kept threatening to do it. You know, because you know he he and I understand now as an adult. I look back and I'm like, hey, that was probably a good chunk of his paycheck that he spent on that one toy. That yeah. that one day, and I can understand. There's times when you know, money money is tight, especially you know my parents, my dad. He he worked in uh, in uh, he had his own per, uh, own business. You know he was a self self employed man. Uh, you know he did well, but not we uh, you know not well enough you know he's uh, we lived in eastern kentucky my mom worked at a ben franklin if you if you guys know what that is um it Somewhat. it was at one time more of like a dollar general not so much a craft store mm -hmm. um, they still exist but they're more of a craft store now 
Um, uh, you know, so my, my mom and dad didn't make a whole lot of money. And I, I can kind of see now in retrospect, I don't blame him. I, 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 you know, I have no ill will toward my dad. I'm not trying to speak badly about him. But I, I distinctly remember that story simply because, or that moment because whenever I got my G1 Metroplex, my dad flipped out. I didn't get a, a big Transformer again for quite a while after that. <laughs> But I, I forgot how we even got on that story. But I, I'm, we started with Go because I had that Play School GoBot, then it kind of sprouted back to uh, I forgot how that got started too. Anyway, oh, you're talking <laughs> about rescue bots and how yeah, we bots. had no clue that they were yeah. super expensive. That's, that's Therefore, your dad also didn't know that a kid's toy could be hmm. super expensive like and, that. And now I get I guess that moment whenever whenever. My, uh, my my sister made me look up that that toy it was it became a sudden realization that hey you know i i i i, I was kind of seeing it through my dad's eyes i'm like holy crap i wouldn't spend that much on a toy for a four-year-old you know and at the time i was maybe 11 maybe 12 so it, it was a little bit. The circumstance was a little bit different, but but you know, hey, he's also the same man that right after I got out of the hospital, whenever I was ten years old, my very first Christmas, uh, you know, because they almost lost me to a, heart, a rare heart disease when I was ten, mm-hmm. and my very first Christmas after that, uh, my mom uh, and I we had already moved to Florida. My dad stayed behind in Kentucky to sell the house and his business uh, or to close the deal. And it was around Christmas time. And uh, right before he came back to Florida to meet up with us, he went to Children's Play World in Lexington, Kentucky. And uh, the story goes, he went in and uh, grabbed a uh, a salesman or one of the stock, stock guys and had him get me one of every transformer that was on the shelf at that time that they had in stock. And I virtually got everything in 1985 that was on the shelf in early 86, uh, save a few characters that they didn't have in stock, like Megatron and everything. I, I, I got like 20, I want to say 20 or 30 transformers in one blow, uh, that Christmas. He spent a fair, uh, you know, I got a, you know, all kinds of stuff, you know. I want to say, wow. I want to say, you spent probably close to five grand on me that year. I mean, some of that was clothes, of course. You know, yeah. my kid doesn't get clothes, <laughs> uh, but you know, he at that time I can also understand he wasn't looking at the prices. He was just happy to have his son still. Um, you know, he went in and just said, "Hey, grab me, help me, help me out here. Grab me." He, lo- my son, loves these things. Get me one of every on, one on the shelf. And that was the best Christmas I ever had. Never had one like that again. <laughs> um, but still, that's insane. Remember that forever. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I will. And it was it was awesome. Um, but I also had to almost die to do it uh, uh, to get that. <laughs> um, and it was not a fun. Details. It was not a fun time for for about six years after that. You know, uh, it's a lot of long time TFYLP listeners would probably remember the story of my love of transformers how it it got so deep uh it has such a deep connection to me because i was a very sick little boy from the time i was 10 to the time i was 16 i was very sick i couldn't run and play with the other kids basically the only thing only thing that kept me happy and gave me a happy childhood was coming home and watching Transformers every afternoon and playing with my Transformer toys. I, w- I was just so enthralled with those. And my very first Transformer I got while I was in the hospital bed, uh, hooked up to IVs and, and nearly dead. Uh, it was a Constructicon Bone Crusher, and I still have it 100% complete. I will never, never part with that toy. Uh, matter of fact, uh, my friend... Uh, he was actually several years younger than me. Um, he brought it to me when I was in the hospital. He came to see me. He lived next door. Uh, 
uh, back in eastern Kentucky with uh, to where I lived, and he brought it uh, brought it to me. And my mom, I don't remember it because I was, you know, out of it, you know, on drugs and everything, laying there in the bed, IVs all hooked up. He yeah, he walked into the yeah he walked in the room and he he saw me and he thought I was already dead. Handed uh, handed his mom the present that you know he was bringing me and ran out of the room crying and refused to come back in the room. Um, so she came over and well, he uh, she uh, he uh, for, I guess he laid it on the bed or something and then he ran out. And yeah, that was that was bone crusher. And I I told him that here about a year or so ago that I still have that toy, and he was blown away. He was blown away. Um. But anyway, that's, that's enough that's about intense. me. That's intense. Yes. <laughs> uh, so that's that's why I have such a deep love of Transformers. It, it reminds me of a time whenever I had nothing to be happy about. And it gave me something to be happy about and something to look forward to and something to hold my interest. Uh, that was that was wholesome and, and you know, I didn't get out and... and rough house with other kids and, and everything. I really couldn't because I was too sick. Same. I know how that feels. So, uh, Jack, you know, do you have any relatable story on that? Is, is that one of the things that endears you to Transformers is you have a similar connection? Well, about the time I was four, I was diagnosed with autism. And pretty much since then, Transformers has been my main security blanket. Because I couldn't really, I didn't really like to play with the other kids. I just wanted to be off of the corner by myself playing with Transformers. I mean, pretty much wherever I go, I'd always have this one little suitcase. About two and a half, three feet long, good foot wide, like a good six, eight inches deep. And to just be jam-packed with Transformers and... Like I said, no matter where I go, even if it was across town just to go to somebody's house for like a cookout, I'd still bring them just to have them if something happens. And uh, that's pretty much been the main thing I do. I don't do it as much. I only say if it's just a small guy like Stinger here, I'd be content with that. Um, but like the medical stuff that Duran had, I've went through two um i've had chest surgery down in st louis that i've gotten a few figures there i think the most memorable one out of that was revenge of the fallen stratosphere that was like two or three years old at the time and i think i found it on amazon for i think 30 bucks and my parents were like well that's going to be your well present pretty much from uh, so that was like a early Christmas slash get well slash Thanksgiving present because I was in the hospital during the week of Thanksgiving for that. Um, so that was pretty much the main one. I had my spine surgery a couple of years later in Minneapolis, and I was pretty much because my brother and sister, as a get well gift, they got me a PS3. So I was at the hospital pretty much playing on that, and my parents were like, oh, we're going to go shopping around. If you want anything, just let us know. And pretty much the only thing I texted them, I'm like, just if you stop anywhere, no matter where you stop, let me know what they got for Transformers. So they were like, I think they stopped at a Toys R Us, and they were like, oh, you know, what do you want? I'm like, well, kind of looking for these. It was, at that time, the Thrilling 30 Generations had just come out, so it was like uh, Orion Pax, the uh, B2 Bomber Megatron, um... I think it was Trail Cutter, Hoist, and Bumblebee pretty much came out at that time. So they got though pretty much the entire first wave of that. It was like four or five figures. Um, then they got... What was it? I think, they, I think the one Toys R Us still had a few Fall of Cybertron figures. So they got like a couple packs of the cassettes or the little disc things that still transform like pieces of crap. Um... And they had a Transformers Prime Thundertron, which that thing I am never getting rid of because that thing is so freaking fun. Do you give him the so, peg leg? Yep. Yeah. Give him the peg leg. I did leg. that too. Uh, 
his little foot that can come off. I actually, uh, I found a picture online to where you can make him kind of look like a parrot. So I got him just on his arm. So, uh, seen that? That's awesome. So that's pretty much the main things. I did have a knee surgery, and I decided, you know, kind of hobbling around on one knee with this big swollen bandage just stuck to my knee. I'm like, did I'm you try to get a job me. at IHOP? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, I was still pretty sedated, so I couldn't work anyway. But uh, I was like, I just want to see what they have. And they ended up, uh, it was like May of 2015. So I'm pretty sure it was just like Combiner Wars and um, I think. So this is really the, recent, actually. The chest surgery was about 2011. So it was like, I was just th- turned 13. My back surgery, I actually had two days after my birthday. Greatest birthday present ever. Um, So I just turned 15 during that. And the knee surgery was about, I think, two years ago, two and a half. I forgot what it was. But, yeah, so I was at the store hobbling around with one leg pretty much, peg leg. And my mom's like, whatever you want, I'm just going to get it for you. Because, obviously, I couldn't go anywhere. Besides barely walking around a Walmart at 11 o'clock in the morning, an hour off surgery. Um, so she goes, uh, yeah, whatever you want, I'm going to get it for you. Since you're going to be in bed pretty much all day. So I got like 50, 60 bucks in figures. And they're pretty much lost in the Combiner Wars jungle up there. But yeah, she's, yeah, with all the medical stuff, Transformers has still pretty much been my security blanket to go to your, your if, go-to yeah yeah if i ever just feel like i don't want to do anything because pretty much through high school i didn't really have all that much for friends obviously because i wasn't part of the popular crowd or the jock crowd geeks, so, geeks tend not to be i mean I, I i had friends but not a whole lot of friends and i was yeah. always i was always one of those kids in high school that you know people uh <laughs> would tend to tend to stay away from because I, I was into into you know sci-fi and all kinds of stuff you know uh, I, mean, I, 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 I was the weirdo i had to play it some games with them occasionally um not a whole lot um so pretty much you'd just be me chilling down whatever room i had at the time because between i think in a span of about two years we moved twice pretty much all over spot spots uh all over town so it's kind of been um hectic moving and obviously you can't have friends over when you're when the first house is kind of not too great of a place to live in the second one kind of have a strict set of rules because we were living with some but some other people at the time and now this place is uh more settled down to where i could finally get people but now that i've i'm out of high school i really don't have much people to talk to so that's pretty much been my main thing is just transformers and video games and but fortunately through the fandom you've met a number of people and and met a lot of friends yes and obviously i have these things these damn expensive expensive bowling balls yeah and uh Uh, yeah you you always got to play with your balls (laughs) i do at least once or twice a week I oh, think, TMI. <laughs> I think that's where uh, the younger collectors differ. Because, at least in my personal experience, I never really had people like... I mean, like nowadays, especially with like all the comic book movies and stuff, like being it's, a nerd is cool Yeah, now. geek is chic, yeah. yeah. So I never really experienced people like, you know, saying anything negative about it. Like most people yeah. I meet for the first time that I tell them they do it, they're like, oh, that's pretty cool. Can I see it? Yeah, you know? that's pretty much what <laughs> I've gotten to. And that's, that sounds they, dirty I mean, too. I mean, that mostly like is because, you know, I don't go out, out of my way to like, you know, hey, guess what? I like to buy thousands of dollars of toys. Like, you know, yeah. like that's more of a thing. It's like if somebody asks about it, then I'll tell them. But yeah. I've never really encountered anything and negative so, I mean, about and it. S- 
see that is that is a, a, a sign of the generation gap you know it's like 30 years ago it was just not like that at all um, yeah well, i mean you had the your... difference between me and you guys jack and sergio i got you know harassed and beat up on the playground for liking transformers when i was at elementary school that's only you know five or six years difference between us but mm-hmm I felt like I had to hide until the movies came out. I wonder if there's some kind of pinpoint that we could that we could actually tangibly look at and say that was the turning point that made uh, geek mainstream. I don't know. Or, when I, when if I there's any one thing. my age now about it, they they remember Beast Wars fondly watching it all the time. So maybe it's just where I was, or I don't know. But I think I it's said like, I like Transformers and Beast Wars, and they hated that. I think it's when the first Avengers movie came. That uh, yeah, started. I'm thinking like 2008, pretty much when the MCU started, and few comic book movies were out. Like, well, see, I started noticing though much earlier than that that um, people would actually look at you less judgingly, I guess, as uh, as it were. Um, they would look at you less, you know, critically so. Because it, you know, like like we've said, being a ner- being a nerd, being a geek, uh, whatever it be, be it, be it Transformers or whatever, um, is socially acceptable now, mm-hmm. or generally. Uh, you know, you still got your older crowd that, like my parents, they they accept it. I mean, they tolerate it, but they yeah. don't they don't they don't really get it. They don't really like it. They just tolerate the fact that I'm into it. My dad still uh, it boggles his mind that I spend money on children's toys and spend so much time, so much of my time dealing with this stuff. Uh, yeah. to, that, you yep. know, that's not even on. You know, to him, whenever he, you know, he put toys away whenever he was really, really young. And to him, toys now is going out and working on a tractor or something. That's yeah. his toys. I, I, I think, like, uh, my dad was a lot more understanding of it because he he's a huge car guy. Like, he, like, lives and breathes cars. Uh-huh. So he collected Hot Wheels, die casts, and all that stuff like that. And so he, my dad used, was... he used to be really into that. So when I started doing Transformers... He saw it as like a healthy hobby because that's what he did when he was buying. I mean, you could like, you uh, could be dr- you could be out buying drugs instead. You're buying plastic. Well, crack. honestly, I mean, yeah. my my parents both grew up in rough neighborhoods, and so their childhoods, you know, lots of the people that they grew up with ended up doing stuff like that. So that's why they they saw this as a healthy hobby where I'm spending money on something that could be a lot worse. Yeah, because I mean, my dad was the same thing. To where by the time I started collecting transformers he was pretty much already used to it because my sisters both were into barbies heavily i mean we had this one giant freaking tote dedicated to nothing but barbie clothes the accessories the dolls all that then there was my brother who was a big ninja turtles fan and so by the time i got started my dad was like yeah go ahead and obviously he collects too because you may not seem like the collector type but i mean he collects all kinds of fishing rods fishing lures all that good stuff pretty much bowling balls the same as i do so yeah he pretty much is like well i I think you you have to look at the generations uh you know decades of uh, of people uh there there was a point in time whenever the idea of collecting anything because at, at its base form, collecting is spending money or getting something, uh, you know, getting a collection of something that has no real function. You know, you don't need it. You buy it, you, you obtain it, whether you buy it or trade for it or it's given to you. You obtain it, you obtain these things only for the simple reason of you, you enjoy it. And, and you just want it mm-hmm. uh, because you, you got to understand. And, and, and that's why I don't criticize my parents for not really understanding it is because they grew up, uh, you know, my dad was born at the tail end of the great depression. Uh, you know, whenever they, they had to fight and scrape for everything they had, they, they, they had to grow their own food. You didn't just 
go to the store and buy it. Um, you know, toys really weren't a necessity. You know, even as a kid, uh, you know, he, he, growing up, he has more memories of going out and helping his dad till the field as a young child than he does playing with toys, playing games. You know, it's it's just a totally different time. I can't even fathom that. You know that, uh, but you know, as as children get older, I think in the fifties, maybe uh, maybe the sixties, uh, um, children uh, and not just children, but even adults. Their mindset started changing. Uh, there was more uh, households started having more of a disposable income, as it were, where uh, you know you could actually have money to left over after you're paying your bills and making sure everything's taken care of. Yeah, I mean, if we're if we're getting like historical here, yeah, like the economic boom after World War II and the rise of the middle class mm -hmm. is why toys like GI Joe and Barbie blew up. Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, my parents come from before that time mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, their, their mindset is totally different from that. I mean, my mom is a little more in touch with it because she raised, she was pretty much the one that raised all the children. My dad, he was there, he was the provider. He didn't really, he wasn't really hands on with my raising, uh, about the only time my dad was hands on was whenever I really fucked up. Uh, you know, it's like if, if my dad was going to, if, if I had to go see my dad about something other, I knew I really fucked up. Uh, but which wasn't often, thank goodness. But being on the receiving end of a switch from my dad, it was not something that I enjoyed. <laughs> uh, but their, their mindset is totally different from, from that. My mom saw the children she raised the children so she is a little bit more in tune with it she gets it a little bit more than my dad mm -hmm. um but then then my my siblings of course they were raised in that time my dad uh, my, my brother he grew up with the original gi joe uh and and action man and all that um and he he, he thinks it's cool he, he, he really thinks it's cool. And he himself is currently into Hot Wheels. He's been into Hot Wheels for several years. Uh, so he gets it. But I, th I think, like like you said, you know, the, the, the post-World War II economic boom, the rise of the middle class, um, it it gives the, 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 the changing attitudes. And the attitudes today where, you know, at one t at one point, being a geek and 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 collecting toys, uh, whether it be Transformers, being into comic books or anything, at one point it was considered socially unacceptable to be into those things past a certain age. You know, you were expected to to like those things as a kid and then grow out of them and start liking girls and uh, you know tuning up your hot rod and 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 tail chasing you know and then finding somebody settling down and having a family and then going on and and doing other things mm -hmm. but nowadays we i guess the term kid alt has 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 come come to, uh, come to uh, come a, 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 has arisen and i think more people my age uh, is like the very f we're the, we're like the very first generation of kid ults uh, that on mass I guess I, I know there's some prior to me I know uh, whenever I used to go to church there was a, a, a gentleman that um, uh, that attended the church that I was at he was a good twenty to thirty years older than uh, than I am and he was he had an enormous GI Joe collection. And I'm not talking about real American hero. I'm talking about the 12 inch, you know, with all the uh, all the flocked hair and all that stuff. He had uh, sealed uh, sealed examples of everything. You know, it was like an insane collection. He he grew up in the 50 uh, the late 50s, early 60s. He got in on the ground floor of some of these toys, and he. Uh, as an adult was could have been classified as a kid old 
Um, but you know, today being being a geek and and being into stuff like this is is totally acceptable. Mm-hmm. Um, so so Christian, how how does Transformers? How did Transformers? become a relatable thing to you uh it, was it more of a co- the collecting aspect that uh, that endeared you to it or um i mean there's a, well, i guess what i'm trying to say is that there's other you said earlier that you you really love robots and there's we all know that there's all kinds of robot franchises out there you got gundam and you got your uh you know the the macross uh, the old Macross, and uh, and uh, to an extent, Power Rangers. What really set Transformers apart for you? I think it was a combination of factors that couldn't have come together at any other time in my life. Like I said, I, I was watching Beast Wars every day, so the characterization of, of the characters on that show made me really like them. And in turn, I was young enough to want you know, toys of that character. Uh, I've talked about this on the show before. Uh, I had a tactile deficiency when I was a kid. Couldn't really manipulate things very well. And so the challenge of trying to get my on-screen characters that I loved in toy form to be able to actually transform into something, to make it work. I I think that coming together with my, trying to conquer the tactile thing, uh, watching the great show, having really supportive parents and uh, just growing up at that certain time. I think all of that came together to make sure that Transformers stayed with me forever. That's, yeah. My side note, since you guys all talked about your dads, I want to mention mine really briefly. I know we're, we're trying to wrap up, but uh, my dad was awesome with Transformers. Uh, when I couldn't have any friends in real life you know, at school that liked Transformers, my dad... Uh, was my sounding board. He, he he doesn't like Transformers so much, but he always let me talk about them or comic books or uh, superheroes, anything. My dad was always there for me for that. And looking back, I mean, he took me to my first BotCon in 2005. We went back in 2006 and 08 and 10 and 12. I mean, to think about how much I spent just by myself to go to BotCon, for him to to take that opportunity and take us both so we could spend time together doing that. It was really cool of him. And I really appreciate it. That is really awesome. Uh, I would, I would assume your dad's probably, uh, he, he was probably born in the late fifties, early sixties. My, my, my guess. Uh, 64. 64. So yeah, r- roughly he's, he's in the, uh, he pretty much grew up in the, the age whenever toys were becoming, popular uh to collect i guess as it were yeah he he and my mom both grew up rough in different ways so they they didn't have that as kids and that probably affected mine and my sister's ability to have stuff when we were kids which is to say they didn't have it they wanted us to be able to have it and we did well see uh, to to an extent um that that had that impacted my family as well uh my i have three sisters and one brother and uh, you know, my brother came second out of the, f- out of the five kids. Um, and then I came 11 years after my closest sibling. So basically by the time I was like, I, I, by the time I got into Transformers, the, the landscape in the family had changed to the fact that my oldest or my youngest sister was getting ready to graduate high school. She uh, she had a boyfriend that she had been steady with for a long time. They they happen to still be married to this day, uh, but she uh, they married right out of high school, and uh, so essentially, even though I'm the fifth of five children, I was raised in my formative years pretty much as an only child because all that my was the same way all my siblings had already moved on uh, into adulthood. And was living their lives separately. Uh, My dad was also fifth of five. Fun yeah. Fact. So yeah. So the, you know, I was fourth of four. You got you got four uh, siblings that they were all pretty much raised together, um, and the all the money that would have bought them toys 
and collectibles would have had to been split four ways. Mm -hmm. You know, so if my brother got one toy, that was probably the one toy, you know, he might have got two toys a year and my other sisters got two toys a year, you know, and so instead of you, you look at it from my perspective, they were getting, you know, uh, four, six, eight, ten toys a year between the four of them. And then yeah. I would get ten toys a year for just me. That did create a little bit of a rift uh, yeah. between yeah. I, my I was pretty much the same way because my two sisters and a brother, my oldest sister was born in 85, my second was 86, and my brother was 87. So obviously by the time I came along, the young, youngest was already like 11. So it was pretty much the same way to where they pretty much had them three well, actually, it was because my dad had the two two of them, and my mom had one. So, obviously, they were kind of split in, in 95. Everybody came together. Not only did they have the three kids then, but they also had two stepkids from another, my mom's previous marriage. So, it was pretty much the five. So, it was pretty much like 15 toys between the five of them, and now it's 15, to, like, drowns it. It's like, had a split that pile for them, now it's that piles all for me and like you said it creates a rift and could turn it, ugly for for many years you know uh, there was actually some animosity uh you know i mean it, i'm not saying that my the, that my siblings hated me and and everything they they could they knew that they couldn't help that i couldn't help that i was born when i was and yep. i was raised when i was uh, I think they more or less were jealous in a way of the fact that um, th that I got more than they ever the, would have dreamed of yep, when they were kids. That was pretty much mine, too. So, and yeah, I completely understand it, where... And, and to be honest, whenever they would come over for Christmas um, and spend Christmas with us, uh, you know, my, my mom, dad, and I... Uh, you know, and I would get several toys for Christmas. I, I would all, I, I, I guess I was young enough at the time. I really didn't, I, I saw it, but I didn't really understand. But every, with every toy I'd open, they'd all be looking at each other like must be nice, you know. Um, although they really never said anything until much later. You know, my brother's like, you yep. know, you, you had it really good. You really had it good as as a kid and uh, and 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 i fully understand that and I, I realize that and i'm very thankful for that um, yeah but i didn't I, you know it's not like i asked for it you know it's not like i i asked to be born when i was <laughs> you know i was an oops uh, quite frankly you know my mom my mom told me i was not planned I, I just came along you know they were they were done after four kids and they, they said that about my dad because my grandma had everything done there like tubed off to where they would not have any more kids and after that they pretty much found out that they were having my dad so yeah <laughs> don't feel bad it was, uh, she she said i was a happy accident you know it's like <laughs> yeah yeah i happened you know they weren't gonna you know they, they don't believe in you know in, in anything like that so uh you know they 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 went with it and you know I, that's that's just the way the the, the ball rolls um, so let's, let's talk more about you guys, uh, getting into the fandom. What is your, uh, I'm going to, I want to go around the room and I'm going to start with Sergio. Uh, what is your opinion when you found out about Transformers prior to you joining basically like generation one and the fans therein? What, what is your, what was your first opinion and now? Uh, and do you still hold that opinion uh, about generation toys and the fans from that era like myself like g1 yeah <clears throat> g1 and g2 i guess i kind of lump those in together i don't really remember my initial thoughts about them but like today i still find a lot of them to be very close-minded I know, especially because I admin the Masterpiece group. 
-hmm. And so I see a lot of comments, uh, angry comments whenever like a new Beast Wars thing comes out, like a new Beast Wars masterpiece is shown. And like, you know, there's 30, over 30 years of Transformers history. There's more than G1 to, to make. There's a lot more to Transformers than there is G1. Uh, I understand that G1, like the people that grew up with G1 is probably the majority of the fans. And most people want to see the, the G1 Masterpiece line continue, but I enjoy the variety. Uh, I think that's what keeps the line interesting. The fact that I can have Masterpiece, Beast Wars, G1, and movie stuff in my collection uh, keeps it interesting. Uh-huh. Because I feel like I'd be bored of collecting the same aesthetic for so long. Pretty much. That's, that's kind of why I'm leaning away from classics because I'm not really uh, I, I don't find myself enjoying them anymore and I understand that they're not primarily made for people like us you know they, they're made for kids hmm. and so I don't fault them for that but yeah. I understand now, now by classics do you mean uh, mean like mainline like yeah like generation the, stuff yeah sure pretty yeah. much yeah I mean you know, I mean, there, there's no arguing that we're not in the picture at all because, I mean, we're getting characters that kids have no idea who they are. Yeah. But the main Battle focus... Battle Slash and Road Trap. The, the main focus is and will always be children. And I understand that from their business perspective. And so I don't fault them for that. And I understand that that product is not for me. However, you don't see me going on forums ranting about why my $10 toy doesn't have, you know, die cast and isn't the size of my masterpiece toys. It's like, it's like this thing, the size cyber, the si- uh, cyber battalion Optimus prime, it, you know, at, from a collector standpoint, this thing's a huge piece of shit. You know, it has well, no, to a kid, it's yeah, their it, it has no, it has no little to no articulation, but you know what? I find it to be a good little fiddle bot. A good That's desk, a, a desk bot, you know. Uh, yeah. Is it worth seventeen bucks? Not really, but hey, it, I can see a yeah. child having a lot of fun with this thing. And, and those are the type of toys that are going to keep Transformers alive. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, Hence, Evergreen. Especially, <laughs> especially, obviously, like the Studio Series leans more towards like the collectors, while the Cyber Battalion and like. The evergreen stuff or whatever that line's called they're more the kids and chug is pretty much more in between to where some kids will kind of get introduced to characters to where they don't really know the name of that's actually no i guess i can't say that's really why they introduced the comics they, that didn't really well <laughs> much as we say as as we said many times here on the on the podcast Collectors are a very fickle, very opinionated group of people. Uh, they, they're, uh, you're never going to please any large group of people right. at any time. There's always going to be people bitching and moaning or complaining about and something. That, that, yeah. that goes that goes for any hobby. Mm-hmm. You, even the non-toy hobbies that I'm in. Trust you, me, like, even you're never in gonna some of these bowling bowling forums you would not believe the amount of bitching i've seen um like take example one ball i noticed that was released there was so much hype behind it then all of a sudden as soon as it released everybody just lambasted the thing like no tomorrow so it does not only work in just one specific fandom it can work in almost anything out there well i know sergio uh you and you and jack could probably uh, i know you're big wrestling fans like i am uh <laughs> you see it in the in the wrestling all the time there's people that absolutely hate on roman reigns and then there's people it's like i don't understand why people hate him so much you know yep. it's like uh, uh, I, I see it argued that People don't like Roman Reigns because other people don't like Roman Reigns and they want a bandwagon. Me personally, I don't like Roman Reigns because he's a freaking meathead on the mic uh-huh. and uh, and he uses like three moves in his in his matches and he, yep. he, tr- he tries to be something that he's not 
and that's not what you do in wrestling. You have to take your, your own persona and amplify it to be successful, to be really successful. You know, uh, even The Undertaker, you know, we all know he's not really an Undertaker, and he's not really dead, but he would take elements, he would actually take... I like to believe. Yeah, he's he, he would actually he's take elements of his own persona and amplify it within that character to give it life. Uh, and and there for a short time, you know, he loves his loves motorbikes, and we had the biker taker, you know. So that weirdness, yeah. Uh, but you know, it, it worked. It worked at the time. And you know, the same thing in Transformers. You know, you got you got people that just don't get why people love cer- uh, certain things or you know follow certain things. I, I, you know, as a G1 person, I get hated on from time to time in, fa- in, in certain forums. And I, I've actually left groups because I just got tired of reading the G1 hate. Oh, yeah. You know, especially when masterpieces were coming out at a much faster rate. All of them were G1 with it, uh, you know, and then, you know, and then Optimus Primal comes along. Or, no, it wasn't Optimus Primal, it was Cheetor, I think. Was it, wasn't he first? Yeah, yeah Cheetor first. first. Uh, whenever he was announced, oh my God, the butt hurt. He's not mm-hmm. a G one character, you know. And and people's all like, oh, you G oneers, you're you're about you're you're finally getting, uh, you know, new, and different things other than G one. You but people are just going to hate no matter what. Haters going to hate. And oh, yeah, I, I've got to the point now where, you know, I I, I don't. I'm not ashamed of being a G1 fan. That's what I grew up as. That's what that's what I resonate most with. I don't hate Beast Wars. It's not my favorite era. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, uh, the recently uh, revealed uh, masterpiece Beast Wars Megatron. I don't collect Beast Wars anymore, but I want that toy. That thing looks flipping awesome. I'm the same. I like I said, I came around the beginning of the Unicron trilogy, and that was my main focus for a while. Then I was like, I kind of want to branch out and do other things. And now I'm just, my main thing is chug to where I just want to pretty much get the best representations of G1 characters in a more modern um, perspective. And that's what chug is. And I'm actually, chug is my biggest thing right now. And obviously I'm not a huge G1 guy. That thing is the biggest part of my collection. And obviously, there's the movie and all that, and damn, because it, like I said, Unicron trilogy is about the time I came in. Love all three shows, and yet that part of the collection is the smallest part. Yeah, uh, so you know, in the interest of time, I want to um, uh, ask you, Jack, real quick. What uh, the same thing that I asked Sergio. As as a younger fan coming into the fandom, wh- what did you? When did you find out about Generation One, the toys? What did you think about them, and what did you think about the fans then versus how you feel now? Is it any different? Well, I think the first time I really noticed G One because I know there was, I've seen episodes multiple times before two thousand five because it was like two thousand five. I really, really got in more into the G One continuity and all that history and uh, it was around 2005 I also had the 20th anniversary of the movie and that's when it really blew up but obviously I knew about like seeing some of the episodes didn't really know there was much fans for it um, so that didn't really care for me by the time I got started so now it's just I feel like there's an oversaturation of G1 fans like Sergio said, with everybody getting pissy left and right, no matter what, it's kind of getting a little ridiculous to where it even kind of drove me away from some of it, too. Because, I mean, just the other day, I had to leave a couple of groups because it was just getting ridiculous with the amount of hate these G1ers spew. So it's, yeah, it's ultimately the exact same thing as Sergio. But, yeah. Well, it's it's 
it's a very closed minded and, and and let's be fair here it's not exclusive to g1 fans it's not yeah i mean i've seen i've seen beast wars fans be very close minded you know if if it's not a beast character i hate it you know why can't transformers go back to beast characters? i mean yeah i've seen a couple like that but it yeah. uh I mainly notice it with the G1. Yeah, it, uh, I think G1 fans are probably more vocal. Uh, and mm-hmm. and I think a lot of G1 fans, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not one of them that feels this way, but I think a lot of G1 fans uh, feel that they're the most important in the fandom because we're, uh, we're the ones that grew up with it uh, when it started we were there from the beginning so all this other stuff is just not it's not transformers to them it's like a uh, it's, moot it's, point well no it's more it's more i guess um trying to find a good word for it yeah i'm, I'm at a loss for words uh but it's it's more of a uh if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mentality. Yeah, yeah. It's like you. It came too late in the game to be considered Transformers, um, so they don't like it. They don't like change. But as we all know, that's what Transformers is all about, in mm-hmm. more ways than one. Change. You you know? Adapt to evolve. Or, well, you know that change modes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Christian, uh, same questions to you. How uh, you told us a little bit earlier, but uh, go a little bit more in depth. How did you become aware of G One and uh, the toys? What did you think about them and the fans, and versus how you feel about them now? So the, the question is, how I became aware of G One toys, not G One in general. G One in general, and then the toys. Well, the G One in general thing is my my blockbuster days, and then. I found out about the toys via early internet stuff. I never found all toys Transformers, but I found, you know, uh, I guess probably back then it had been Angel Fire or other weird image hosting places. So you could see pictures of people's collections. Geo shitties. Pictures of people's, <laughs> yeah, that's that's what it was. It was or the mosaic cities. pictures. Yeah. Yeah. You just see collection pictures. Um, he's not on the show, and I'd probably never tell him this in person, but a, a big big part of me learning about G1 toys was Rick's first book. I didn't know Rick was Jay Alvarez until much, 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 much later. But, uh, you know, I, I've devoured that book in a day. I found it at, uh, my local borders bookstore. It tells you how long ago that was. And my parents were like, how did you get through that so quickly? I was always a good reader. And I was just like, I just want to, I just want to know more about it. So I, I guess because there were publications, I knew there were fans, but my first real fan experience came after I registered for BotCon 05 mm. and became part of the collector's club when I came home from BotCon 05 and started talking on the club boards. And that was a really good place you know, at BotCon and then later at the club boards. They were very accepting of having someone like me, someone that young. Uh, they're very supportive wanted to know where I came from, wanted to know my ideas, wanted to talk to me. And I think I would feel very differently if I'd started on a place like TFW or Sabertron back then. It just didn't seem maybe as welcoming. They had good, good pictures, good, good hosted collections. I loved looking at them, but I never felt like I wanted to participate. And I still feel that way. Mm-hmm. It's very toxic in, in places like that. So I, I kind of stick to my, my former... Transformers Club buddies, and we we talk about all generations. Where we like everybody, and we hang out together. Except Kiss players, we never talk about Kiss players. We talked about Kiss players last night. You know, as bad as that was, we got cool auto mm-hmm. from them. Yeah, there's always something you can pull out of a generation. That's all I talk about. <laughs> with Kiss players. Kiss players is all I talk about with Christian. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, he calls me every day. We talk about kiss players, uh, but I, I think I think my mindset of trying to go and accept everyone comes from me bridging gaps like I did because like I said, you know, had Beast Wars every day after school. I had G One every weekend, and then I started collecting toys for real in the Unicron trilogy. So you just kind of cross cross all these realms, and you learn to like things from all of them. And it it, it jars me when people don't like things from. 
or not, they can't find anything to like from a generation. It weirds mm-hmm. me out. And I, I can totally understand, you know, not being into a particular line due to an aesthetic. It's, it's kind of like, like we talked about last night when we recorded uh, the, uh, the show about Transformers Animated. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I like the show. The toys were fine. That uh, The toys were good. Uh, they represented the cartoon well. But aesthetically, I don't like how they look on my shelf. Yeah. You know, That's and, and I, I, pretty I, much got I find that a, a perfectly valid reason. Uh, you know... Yeah, but at no point did you just say, I hate animated. It's not Transformers. I can't believe they would have made that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not... I, it's, it's just... It's like the Rescue Bots thing I was talking about earlier. Never anything I was really into. I never even considered collecting Rescue Bots. But I, I'm... Like I said, I'm glad that it exists because it has, it serves a purpose. There are some that's in it. You know, RID 2.0, I think it serves a great purpose as a uh, entry-level collector's grade toy. Um, it, it, if you could call it that. it's To me, it's more collectible and more intricate, I guess, than Rescue Bots. Um, and it's a good way to work your way up into uh, more complex toys like gen- uh, the generations and even masterpiece yep um so well let's let's hope that in you know 15 years we can talk to the next group of young collectors who, who came up through now talk about how their their experiences are different it's, from absolutely. yours and different from ours and absolutely i mean it's 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 one of those things as an older uh, older fan and older collector um <laughs> It joys me to see guys your age be as passionate about this hobby uh, and everything. And I understand, you know, from time to time, you know, interests wane, but you always come back to it because it's something that you you truly admit that you enjoy. Um, You said it before. You don't have to have a large collection or a collection at all to enjoy Transformers. Mm -mm. Everyone can enjoy it in their own way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you could pretty much be an idol as a collector and then come back to it, you know, a year, two years down the road and, and resume and you're, and you're fine. Uh, but you still come back to it. You know, you still find yourself, um, you know, even whenever I don't have the money to buy toys, I'll find myself, I'll come in to this collection room and I'll sit down and I'll look at, uh, look at my figures and while I may not get some of them down and transform them, I'll sit there and look at them and go, wow, his design, the, uh, you know, the way they pull that off is so impressive. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, it just, it, it's just visually impressive. And then the, uh, and then sometimes I might be compelled to get it down and mess with, you know, and, and like this thing is fun to play with, you know, uh, like I recently, uh, got down the KFC, uh, uh, Kingzilla, the the Snapdragon that I was showing Christian uh, last night. Uh, to me, that's a fun toy to play with. I, I love how they pulled it off. It executes well. It looks good. It 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 just does it for me. You know. So as as a fan, it it, it makes me look at my hobby, and a, even though we're of a totally different generation. You guys come along after, uh, well after me, but yet we have this one thing in common that. Oh, this sounds so terrible. Uh, this this must be bad. What are what are you guys? Uh oh. Are you sharing dick pics again? <laughs> Having a gift war in the chat. A gift war. war in the chat. Where is this? I want to see this. <laughs> Do you want to? I posted your uh, your old GoBots in there too. You should see which one it was. Oh no, oh no! I, it's okay. all fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Oh really? Everything's fine. We just need to wrap. That's all. Oh lord! What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> the kid doing the. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm you just. Know you had to do it to him, Serge. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. God. All right, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of TFYLP. I know I have. Um, you know, it, it's always good to go back and, and, and kind of look at ourselves as collectors and see where we come from, see where we're going, 
how we got here. It's always fun to do that. Um, we'd love to hear your story, so you can share them on our Facebook group at facebook.com slash uh, groups slash TFYLP. Uh, also, you can follow us on Twitter uh, at TFYLP. That's the easiest way to get a hold of me directly if you have any comments or questions uh, regarding uh, the, the show or Transformers in general. If you want to know more about Transformers, um, you know, you can, you can send a question and we can pose it as a, or answer it as a group, uh, right here on the show. Uh, and as always, uh, you can check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash TFYLP. Uh, I think that'll wrap us up this week. Uh, hope to see you live, um, as, as availability allows. Um, you know, I've, I've got some, some work issues coming up here so i'm going to be doing a whole lot of overtime so that's going to be pretty much the reason why uh a lot of these pre-records so uh just bear with us please pretty please <laughs> pretty please the all right on top. you guys have any closing uh comments or thoughts um we love that's you see you soon what what's your favorite gift <laughs> Thumbs up, kid. Thumbs up, kid. Mine's, mine's that little uh, little girl just looking at the uh, screen, going, <laughs> just looking back and forth. her eyes are darting back and forth. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Mine is the Mike Tyson losing losing himself, clapping and laughing. And then there's always a sad Jordan, the crying Jordan. <laughs> those those never get old. Especially on a team that just chokes like the Red Sox the other day. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next time on TFYLP. Good night, everybody.